This is part two of a three-part series where we talk about soul mandate strategies. Everything I know on closing more soul mandates so you can finally break through and build the career of your dreams. Keep watching if you are interested in more negotiation tactics to close mandates. And if you haven't watched the first video, go ahead, click on the link below and catch up with the first part of the story before continuing. I'm Leandre and I love helping ambitious agents truly reach their dream goals. And in order to do that, I decided to share some of my key insights, especially when it came to handling objections and negotiating that ever important soul mandate. This part is the juicy bit. This is where you've already done your paving the way, you've told them who you are, you've done your listing appointment, you've presented your valuation. Now it comes time to close that mandate. Before I do that, my distinguishing factor was this Trump card. I know it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. I googled and Trump card comes from a Latin word that means triumph. And by far it was my triumph. So it's our story of Claire and Mark, who is immigrating to New Zealand. The one is a bookkeeper and the other one is a CA. So I really had my work cut out for me when it came to the numbers and presenting a compelling argue for them to trust me with their mandate. I could show them that I have a database of buyers looking to buy properties in your area. So unlike most agents who merely take photographs, places it on the web, waiting for people to contact them for viewings. I also did that, but I had a database of buyers actively looking for their house and I was able to send that brand new release listing to a huge group of people in order to have multiple viewings at the same time. Best is that I show you, I'm going to hop into PropCon and show you. In my system under contacts, I go to search and I choose wish lists. If you are not familiar with our program, every buyer has a wish list where you load them with specific criterias. When you do that, it automatically matches up with listings in your system. You send that off to them. And if none of those listings are what they're looking for, they will get single new release homes as you load them into your system. This wish list lookup you are able to show them, put in the specs of a house and show them exactly how many buyers you have in your system, in your database, looking for their home. So this is what I would do. Of course, it says status for sale. I would say their property is a house. So I would just choose the type. I can add in the exact suburb by looking up the area. Just use an arena as an example and then a their house had three bedrooms two bathrooms and a double garage and the price we came to was 2495 and search now of course this is my test system <laughs> where there's very scanty data in but I still remember to this day that I had 52 buyers looking for their exact home so all of them will be listed here below, showing the matches, how many you have. I was also in an office partnership where I had access to my colleagues buyers in order to keep that sale in house. But I'm not going to go into detail about that today. In essence, this will show your client how many active buyers you have. If you are a little bit hesitant to show them the full details, I just want to show you what it looks like on your phone. So this is something that you will do from your cell phone. They will only be able to see the name, the surname and the first bit of the email. And of course you can scroll down and that's where the penny drops, where they can see you already have a database and it's not just all talk. Now in the third video, I'm going to go into detail of how you can use that database to proactively market that house. 
But the most important thing was being able to show them that I have a database, I can proactively market your house already to a group of people. Tip number two in this video is asking for a mandate. Don't be afraid to ask them, how do you feel about giving me a sole mandate? And listen to what they say. In my case, because I worked with numbers people, they were really happy with the marketing price. They were happy with my commission 5% plus VAT, but they were reluctant what will happen if it sells for less than asking price. So my answer to them was my commission compromise formula. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it below. It is an awesome tactic that you can use to convince your seller that you will drop the same percentage that they drop in asking price, that same percentage you drop from your commission. The only kicker is you work with the numbers. You don't drop from 5% to 4%. You work out the exact RAND value and then subtract 10% that they are dropping in asking price, for example, and that will give them that win-win compromise. So that was my promise to them. Have a look at that video to learn in detail how that works. The next objection was the typical one. Well, if I give you a mandate, what happens to all the other agents and all the other buyers that we might lose out on? And yeah, that was a good valid question. And my answer to them was, I would love to sign a three month mandate with you. For the first month, I will bring my database through and I will look for any new inquiries online. If any agents phone you to bring buyers through, just send them my way. And I will make sure that, that if the buyer is not on my database and they are pre-qualified, that I will work with that agent. Then in month two, if your house isn't sold by then, I will sit with you and we can identify key agents in this area, five or six of them that we invite for a mini listing. I show them your house. They can market it on their own website. Commission stays the same, split 50-50 between us. Everything happens on my paperwork and I'm able to protect you. All viewings take place through me as well. So. The third month, we might open it up to even more agents. I know some of you watching this are not a fan of opening up your listings to other agents, but hear me out on this one. It was important for me to close that mandate and to make sure that I was the only one marketing that house. That gave me the opportunity to get them the highest price. Inviting other agents helped me to to create key relationships with agents in my area. Because let me tell you, if I invite somebody from another company and tomorrow I wanna to bring a buyer through their mandate, how hard is it gonna be for them to say no to me? So apart from putting my sellers at ease, this tactic really worked well to build and maintain important relationships with my competitors for the, when the time comes when I need a foot in the door in, in one of their mandates. I also reminded them of uh, how a mandate protects them from double commission claims and how I was registered with the um, PPRA and how the code of conduct obligated me to take care of their best interest first. And appointing an agent will make sure that I work for you. It's my job to sell your house and look after your interest first. And also for security reasons, it's better just to have access through one agent. So those were some of the key tactics. And the last tip, tip number three, is a ball <laughs> that many agents drop. It is the promise of regular feedback. Feedback is one of the biggest things that clients complain about lack of communication, lack of feedback, sitting there wondering, well, you know, this buyer came through yesterday, I haven't heard from Leandre, I don't know what they said, what are they thinking? I had this mantra that I never leave my clients wondering. So I always promise them detailed feedback every week on a Friday and feedback after every client viewing. 
not just being a messenger of the feedback but really interpreting what the buyers are saying what do they mean when all of them say the house is too dark or that room is too gloomy or that wall is too dark or you know kind of using the feedback as as a way to help them improve the marketing because the marketing is a group effort it's not just me selling their house they sell their house I take care of the marketing and it was my job to make sure that we really raised the bar and kept it at a high level to sell it very quickly so that is it for this second video with the three tips on how to really up your game to close that mandate very important to close it if you really like this video please hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of these I'm working on a huge arsenal of videos that I would love for you to see and join me in the third one in the series where we will delve into the details of proactive marketing.